Here's the situation. We have a customer. They have a very large file. What do you mean a large file? Is it, it a big zip file? Yeah, it's a large Word document. Okay. Several thousand pages. And what they do with this file is they convert it into a PDF and they upload it and share it with the rest of the employees of their company. Okay, so they take a 3,000 page Word document, PDF it, and then all of the staff have access to this 3,000 page PDF file. Exactly. Sean keeps using the word PDF as a verb. Google has been accepted into the dictionary as a verb, but you don't PDF something. You convert something to a PDF or you save as a PDF. You don't PDF it. Okay. Through a SharePoint intranet site. Okay? okay, so some of the problems with that is obviously the authors of this document author different sections of it. Okay. And it's too big. People can't get through all that information yeah. just to find the very section that they're looking for. No one wants to read a 3,000 page PDF file. Okay. Including you and I. So right. let's get this handled. I don't have time to be making another video. I have actual work that I need to do. So how are you going to SharePoint this? <laughs> okay. So I was thinking right out of the gate, the file's too big. Right. It needs to be uh, chopped up into multiple files. And I'm looking at, I'm approaching this from a, a SharePoint out of the box, purist kind of perspective. Okay. So why don't we get this file, chop it up, and then upload it into multiple locations or even a single location, respective to who has permissions to control which aspects of the, the document. So you say just take one Word document, make 50 Word documents out of it, maybe chapter one, chapter two, chapter yep. three, and control the permissions on those individual things for the content authors for those sections. Yep, that's what I'm thinking. And then okay. if they have to convert that to PDF, maybe those authors, that can be part of a workflow. Like once I'm done with this, it gets reviewed and approved and then Part of that workflow is to remind an author to just convert it to PDF before it's finally published. Well, that's one way to do it. One of the common complaints I hear about consultants is that they're order takers. A client will come to them and say, I need you to do something for me. And the consultant goes, okay, I'll exactly do that something for you. I think one of the primary jobs consultants have is to advise and provide guidance on how to correctly and appropriately approach technology solutions. My idea is to get this out of Word documents. People are so used to using Microsoft Word, but this is for an intranet. This is being accessed on their website, on their intranet site, make this web content. Okay. With SharePoint, it has the same interface for editing HTML content as it does for doing basic Word Well, editing. how do you share that information? Now? So if I have a section of this, I need to share it with someone else. How do, how do I, you know, it's on the intranet. How do I get that? Email it to somebody. You don't email it to somebody. It's on the intranet. You email them a link to it. If it's an internal person with access to it. That's correct. I give his solution about a 2% chance of working. That is by definition usually what an intranet is. Okay, so I guess, uh, you know, play devil's advocate there again would be a lot of times customers just want you to do it their way. That's true. Guess they what, do. guys? We said it needs to be a PDF. We, we want you to solve this problem for us. We have SharePoint, solve it with SharePoint. The solution there might be a balance between those two. So you get my Word documents, 50 of them. Right. You convert those using document conversion. That is built into SharePoint. That is. And then you have your web pages like what you want. That is an approach. <laughs> what Sean does all too often is try to automate an old way of doing things because that's exactly what the client said. They said, we've always done it this way, we want to automate the way we've always done it, and we need your help automating that. I try to bring uh, a little different perspective into that and actually try to get them to leverage the platform and maybe change the business process a little bit. So Johnny has a lot of great ideas for accomplishing things that the client didn't ask for or want. In the end, let them have a solution that meets the requirements that uses the SharePoint platform. Yeah, hey, Mr. Customer, we got it all figured out. You need to totally change the way you run your business. So as you can see, there's a variety of different ways to do things in SharePoint. We're going to take a couple of these ideas back to the client and see what approach they want to take. All right, sounds like a plan. All right. This client's got a pretty tough decision to make. I mean, it's like when you're at a cookout and you have to decide, do I want a hamburger or do I want a hot dog? Most of the time, I take one of each. 
So what John always does here is he comes up with some totally different way from really what the customer is even looking for. You know, they said, Sean, we want this, this, and that. And he comes back and says, no, you should do it this way and that way. And yeah, I don't know. Listen, the old way you did it was to use PDFs. I recommended a new, smarter, faster, better way to do it. And then the response I get is, oh no, where's my PDF? Well, guess what? Welcome to the 20th century. Let's move away from a print-based platform. So the customer asks for something, and as usual, Johnny figures out what they should have asked for and delivers to that. Johnny's got a big ego. Another great reason to use a PDF file is it's a gigantic proprietary file format that requires a specific download to even use, not like a web page at all. <laughs> A lot of people get confused about PDF files. A PDF file is not a proprietary format. It has been an open standard since July 1st, 2008. Why don't you just ask the newspapers how well the print medium is going?